In the last set of PowerPoint slides, we talked about the fact that males are more physically violent than females. But I also mentioned that it isn't just a mindless, unpredictable kind of violence. Um, and in fact, male aggressive behavior is very sensitive to social contexts. So even though males have predispositions to behave aggressively in certain situations, the culture that they grow up in uh, sets the rules on when and where one can behave aggressively. And cultures that place a premium on a man's reputation will overall be more violent than cultures that don't put so much emphasis on this. And we call these cultures cultures of honor. And cultures of honor encourage men to resort to any means necessary to protect their reputation. Cultures of honor frequently have certain characteristics in common. First of all, formal law enforcement is often weak or absent. Think about the Wild West in America. Uh, you're out there kind of on your own. Uh, you can't just call in authorities to protect you or deal with problems. You have to handle things on your own. Situations like this encourage the development of a culture of honor. Secondly, if you're in a society where the resources that are valued by that society can easily be stolen by other people, you're more likely to develop a culture of honor. If you look at the history of violence in different societies, you'll see that herding societies, societies that depended on people raising cattle and sheep and other kinds of livestock, usually have a much more violent history than farming societies, and the reason for that is quite simple. Uh, it's much easier to steal sheep than it is to steal a cornfield. And so in societies where herding is the main source of wealth and status among men, a man has to develop a reputation for being a real tough son of a bitch. If you're thinking about stealing sheep, you better look elsewhere. Uh, because if you get a reputation for being an easy mark, uh, you're not going to have any sheep. Nor are you going to have any status or respect. Cultures of honor also usually have an uneven distribution of resources. There are a lot of people that have stuff and a lot of people that don't. If everybody has pretty much the same things, it's, uh, there's less pressure to steal and less pressure to protect your resources because you don't really have anything that anybody else doesn't already have. But when you're in possession of things that are highly valued by others who don't have them, uh, this creates a different situation. Now, if a culture of honor does have a strong, stable social organization, you'll actually see less anti-social violence. In other words, you won't see as much um, murder in the commission of robberies, for example. But you will see a higher level of honor disputes, men being killed in duels or being killed in uh, fights over rip. Most of the research on cultures of honor have been done in the United States. This map represents the electoral college map from the presidential election in 2012 when Barack Obama was running against Mitt Romney. And you'll notice that we have blue states and red states and that's kind of become a way of talking about the political divide in America. But interestingly enough, this blue state, red state political division uh, very closely mirrors the difference between culture of honor states and non-culture of honor states in the United States. Um, violence and the acceptance of violence tend to be higher in the West and in the South in the United States. And by the West, I don't mean the Pacific Coast states, but the Rocky Mountain and Great Plains states. Now, I will also mention that most of this research uh, holds only for white Americans. There is, in fact, evidence that inner city African American men uh, very frequently grow up inside of a culture of honor as well. Here are some random research findings on culture of honor in the United States. Small towns in the South have tripled the homicide ri rates, excuse me, of small towns in the North. Uh, but it's not that there are more robberies or unsolved murders going on. The difference in homicide rates is almost entirely due to homicides that come following an argument or an insult of some sort. Students in culture of honor states are more likely to have brought a weapon to school in the previous year. 
There are significantly more school shootings in culture of honor states. As a matter of fact, twice as many per capita as in northern states. Residents of culture of honor states uh, desire more extreme and violent responses to terrorist acts. So when there's some uh, atrocity committed against Americans anywhere in the world, uh, residents of culture of honor states uh, demand a much stronger response. Southerners are more accepting of three types of violence in particular. Self-defense, corporal punishment of children, and responding to insults. Uh, one interesting study uh, sent out job applications, a, a cover letter uh, along with a job application, in which the job applicant had done some time in prison. And the cover letter explained the reason for that, and it was the result of a violent altercation uh, over a matter of insult and reputation. Uh, the job application received more responses from employers in the culture of honor states in the South than in other states. People in the West and the South watch more violent television programs. They have higher subscription rates to magazines featuring weapons, combat, and physical strength. And uh, males in culture of honor societies respond to insults with more stress, anger, higher levels of arousal, and higher levels of testosterone. And there are some laboratory studies that show that when you bring guys into the laboratory and insult them, um, then if they're in a situation where they can respond aggressively in the experiment. If they're from a culture of honor state, they're more likely to do so. So how did these cultural differences in different parts of the United States come to be? Uh, we don't know for sure, but uh, researchers in this area believe that it can be traced back to the origins of the uh, current American societies in those areas. The North was originally settled by farmers who had Puritan, Quaker, and Dutch backgrounds. Southern states, on the other hand, were originally settled by Scotch-Irish settlers who had a long herding tradition, and recall that herding societies tend to be more violent than farming societies. And the South was also settled by land-owning noble gentry who had a long-standing code of defending manly honor through dueling. Now, of course, uh, there's much more mixing of people these days, moving from one place to another. Um, but the cultural norms, the laws that were put into place, uh, the judicial system, all of these things were developed early on when these regional differences were quite strong. Um, the Civil War in the United States, more than 150 years ago, was in fact uh, very much a part of this cultural clash between these different types of states.